subscribes. There is a ROM hack for Chrono Trigger called Enhanza Edition that has been on my long list of games I've wanted to try for quite a while now. And at the time of making this video, uh, version 1.1 came out, I wanna say like a couple days ago. So I wanted to throw together something quick just to kinda detail some things I liked about it and if nothing else, let people know that maybe weren't aware that this hack exists. Currently, I'm not too far into my playthrough. Uh, I had just gotten the Moss Immune for Frog and defeated Slash. But regardless, I've already encountered some stuff that I really like, so I figured I would chat about it for a bit. I'd say probably the highlight for me in this hack is that there's a new NPC in the end of time, Toma, who can offer unique upgrades for your characters. In a way, it kind of reminded me of Final Fantasy VI Brave New World. In that hack, you can kind of customize what stats you want to upgrade per character based on what Esper each character is allowed to use. I thought that was a really great mechanical change in that hack. So it's nice to see something that seems kind of similar in this one. And in order to gain access to all of these upgrades, you hand in what are called soda tabs. The, these are the, the replacement for, in the original game, they have like strength tabs, magic tabs. Now you just find soda tabs and you can trade them in. So each character seems to have like some more basic kind of upgrades, like, you know, just power, strength up, magic up, stuff like that. But I was immediately drawn to, they have some unique ones for each character. Like uh, Luca can get Hypnowave Plus, which makes Hypnowave never miss. Uh, Chrono gets like Cyclone Plus, which makes Cyclone and all the group techs that involve it do 30% more damage. Luca also gets the option for one called Replication, which I can't imagine anyone would ever want to pass up. Where, like, anytime she does a magic spell, there's just a 50% chance she'll recast it. I imagine, like, that's gotta be insane once you get, like, flare and stuff. So, there's some really cool options that I like to see here. All of which are detailed in the readme that's supplied with the download. So, that makes for a good read. There's a good bit of versatility just from the weapons alone. Luca and Marl, for example, both get several weapons early that are very effective against specific types of enemies. And then something else that was really cool, I didn't really mess with it much, but when I got to Robo, apparently he can equip bows and guns also. So there's definitely a lot of options that you have. So a few things about just the basic combat that I like. The first actually doesn't pertain to the player characters, but the enemies that you fight. Uh, some stuff hits really damn hard, and I kind of like it. This hack by no means feels like a straight up difficulty hack, but it's far from free. And I really appreciate the added challenge. You have to be on your toes. And I did even up to where I've played thus far. I wanna say I've wiped, I think four or five times. And I don't know, just in general, I, I, I really don't like when games, especially turn-based RPGs are too easy. They tend to get really boring, I find, if that's the case. So you definitely have to be pretty well aware of, you know, what your characters are good at, what, what your plan's gonna be. You can't just mosey along and hold down the A button and win, which is nice. The next thing I really like is the role that status effects play. This became pretty obvious early, actually. Uh, Luca, for example, gets a weapon that I'm not going to remember off the top of my head, but I want to say it's like when she does her regular attack against machine enemies, like the ones here, there's an 80% chance it'll cast stop on them. And combined with what I said earlier about how certain enemies hit really hard, you definitely get rewarded pretty nicely for keeping things like this in mind. Another random example I can think of is poison in general is terrifying. In a lot of games, like vanilla FF6 comes to mind, you, you get poisoned, you basically don't care. Like it does nothing. You just pop an antidote after the fight and be done with it. But here, after one fight, leaving it on and seeing how much damage it did, I was like, damn, I need to get rid of this ASAP. And these kind of things just, they, they add a nice feel to the fights, you know? Uh, if I was to reference Brave New World again, that was a, a huge thing I liked was that even the trash mobs 
aren't sleeper material, you know? Like, you have to pay attention and actually play around status effects, pay attention to what enemies are weak to, etc. And that same sort of attention is needed in this hack so far from what I can tell, so good stuff. The boss fights so far have been a mix of super free and pretty challenging, I find. Though to be fair, like, the some of the boss fights that are really easy, like the killer smurf robos, for example, it makes sense that they're easy, and I'm glad they are, just because of where they are, like, when you fight them. You don't really get a save point right before them, and they're just in a terrible spot to have to restart from. Some are pretty standard fare, which, again, makes sense for earlier bosses. Hecarin, for example, you just, you know, you just got magic, Luke and Marl can do antipode and just spam it and melt them. But yeah, similar to what I said for just general enemies and combat, there are bosses and moves that will keep you on your toes and have you scrambling a bit, which I really appreciated. But yeah, so far I'd say this hack is doing what it's set out to do pretty nicely. The trash mobs and boss fights both have a bit of oomph to them. I appreciate all the different options available to you, like all the different unique upgrades that Toma gives you at the end of time. Every character individually is pretty versatile. Uh, I like all the different ways you can choose to play them. It really makes picking different parties for each stage of the game really satisfying, I find. So yeah, based on what I've played so far, I would definitely recommend it. I'll leave a link to the uh, hacks download page or something in the, in the description. So that's all for now. Y'all have a good one.